Amen. I want to go to James chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, if you'll go there with me. Amen. Amen. That just so happens to kind of go along with some of the part of the scripture here. But the last verse, verse 8, is what we're going to pay attention to. But I want us to read verses 5 through 8. Amen. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace? Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Everybody say amen. amen. Isn't that an awesome promise? Isn't that an awesome promise? Amen. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Amen. Say that. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Now, that's an old English word for close. Nigh is the same word for close. Draw close to God. Say this. Draw close to God, and God will come close to you. Praise God. Is that awesome? Amen. Amen. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. In other words, he doesn't want you to think two things at once. He wants you to train your mind to think the right thing. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a wave offering right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now turn to somebody else, shake their hands, smile, and say, God got it all under control. No need to be a... Amen? Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the church. Amen? I said I appreciate the church. Without the church, where would we be? Amen. We'd still be lost. Amen. Because it's the church, amen, that preaches the gospel. Amen. It's the mission of the church. Praise God. And I love the church. Amen. I, I just want to say again on behalf of my wife and I how privileged and honored we are to be here with you all. We've been here since the first of the year. Amen. Just uh, kind of waiting on God. And, uh, and we're, just, we're just so thankful that you guys are here. Amen. That Pastor Dieter is here. Pastor Gus is here. Amen. And the elders and this church, we're, we're thankful to be a part of it. Amen. Amen. I love these people so much. Amen. Well, the title of my message is, Whose Move Is It? Whose Move Is It? Turn to your neighbor and say, Whose Move Is It? Whose Move Is It? My family and I are my family loves to play board games. And in particular, one board game they love all the time. Whenever we're together, they play it. And it's Scrabble. How many love Scrabble? Me, not so much. <laughs> uh, I don't have patience for board games. Um, they, they love to play it over and over again. And because I love my family, every once in a while, you know, I play with them. You know, ever so often. You know, from time to time, I'll play with him. Amen. And play that board game. And, but you know, my problem with the game is that I'm constantly not paying attention to whose turn it is. And I'm always asking, whose move is it? Whose turn is it? Because, I, I, you know, I really don't want to play. And so, you know, I'm, I'm distracted. You know, there's a butterfly, you know. I'm going off in the other direction, you know. And, and I, have, I lose track, and I always ask, whose turn is it? Who's, whose move is it? And you know what? They always come back and say, it's your turn. I've, I've totally spaced it out. All six other people have gone, and I'm like way out in la-la land. And I'm saying, whose turn is it? Well, we've been waiting on you for the last five minutes. We thought, we thought you knew it was your turn. Amen. Praise God. The whole point of a board game, though, is to wait your turn. Not everybody can go at the same time. Right? Because if you go at the same time, you lose track of what's going on, and you have to wait your turn. And if you don't take your turn, then you throw somebody else off. And if somebody else is thrown off, then the whole board game just breaks down. You don't have a game. You just have just coffee, you know. That's all you're doing, right? You're just doing nothing. 
How many's ever been in a situation like that where you're looking, you're waiting for the person to move on the board game or whatever, and they just don't do it? It's like chess. I can't play chess. I love the thought of chess. I love the, the strategy of chess, but I don't have patience to wait for the other guy to move. Amen. And I'm constantly saying, whose move is it? Whose move? Whose turn? Whose turn is it? Amen. Amen. That's exactly the way it is in our walk with God, church. Amen. Not that we're some kind of game piece and a big cosmic board. Amen. But God has done some things for us. Amen. God has done some things for us. Praise God. And God has said, I have done things for you, and now it's your move. Amen. There's two words I want us to explore today, and that's promised and provided. Everybody say promised and provided. Promised and provided. They're very important terms in the entire Bible. Amen. Because you see, when God promised to Abraham, he said, through your seed, I'm going to bless the entire world. I'm going to bless all the nations, everybody. He gave him a promise. Amen. And all the Old Testament, amen, all of that was all about promises, 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 one after another, one after another. And God promised all throughout the Old Testament that he was going to do great things. And there was coming a day where he's going to have a new covenant and a new law. And it's going to be written on your heart and not on tables of stone. And you're going to have all these things. And they're not going to be promises anymore. They're going to be provided. Everybody say, praise God. God. Provided is New Testament. It's already come. It's already happened. It's there. Amen. When Jesus went to the cross, amen, he spread his arms open wide. They nailed him to the cross. He had the crown of thorns. He was already beaten. His beard was plucked out. Amen. He was bruised and he was bleeding and they lifted him up. Amen. He hung on the cross. Praise God. And there for six hours one Friday, amen, he bled and he bled and cried and agonized over every one of us. And the Bible says he took upon himself the sins and our sicknesses and all of our sorrows and he bore them upon his own flesh on the cross. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. And after a little while, he said, it is finished. Everybody say provided. Provided. Jesus provided it all for us on the cross. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I thought I'd get a little more Pentecostal response from that. Amen. From this group. Amen. Today. Praise God. Jesus provided everything for us on the cross. Somebody say glory to God. I said the blood of Jesus has not lost its power. The blood of Jesus has not lost its power. 2,000 years ago, it's the same today. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory to God. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. All of God's promises are provided for us. Amen. God's way, if we want to win with Christ, we have to do things God's way. Amen. Everybody say God's way. Not not Gandhi's way. or, Or Muhammad's way. Or Buddha's way. Or Krishna's way. Or the way of, you know, uh, United Way (laughs) or, you know, uh, anything else, right? Not the the United Nations, right? Not their way, not the way of the United States and the Constitution, but it's God's way. Everybody say God's way. Amen. God has a way of doing things. Amen. If we want to encounter God, if we want everything that God has already provided for us, we've got to do things God's way. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, I'm comfortable with God's way. See, you got to get comfortable with God's way. You got to say, God, it's your way or no way. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I got to get comfortable with the way God does things. Right? Praise God. If I want my prayers answered, if I want my body healed, if I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, if I want victory in my life, if I want blessings in my life, I got to do things God's way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's like, you know, if you're if you're working on a job and you're going to work overtime, but you don't put the time on your timesheet. Amen. You turn your timesheet in without the overtime on it. Amen. Are you going to get paid for your overtime? No. 
And you go to the accountant, the accounting department and say, listen, you know, I worked all this overtime, amen, and you didn't pay me, and I want paid. And they say, well, we didn't see it on your timesheet. And we can't pay you unless you put it on your timesheet. you got to do it our way. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. you got to do things God's way. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey, let's do things God's way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. When, when Jacob had an encounter with God, the Bible says that God, when he was wrestling with God in a theophany, in a physical form, he was wrestling with God. God turned to him and said, let me go. He says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. He says, okay, boom, I'm blessing you. Right? He said, now your name is no longer Jacob. It's now Israel because as a prince with God, you have prevailed. You did things God's way. You held on to God until God said, now I'm going to bless you. Oh, glory to God. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Some of you are at the door of blessing. Some of you are right at the door. Amen. Getting ready to be blessed. Don't give up. Amen. Keep holding on. Keep getting a hold of God in the morning prayer. Keep getting a hold of God in the word. Keep getting a hold of God in praise and worship. Amen. Don't turn your, your radio station back to the country music station. Keep it on the, on the Christian station and keep worshiping the Lord because you're just this close. Amen. From going through the door of getting a blessing like you've never been blessed before in your life come on somebody hallelujah god is right at the door for someone here today praise god somebody clap your hands to the lord oh glory praise god in galatians chapter 6 verse 14 through 16 it says but god forbid that i should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world was crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth much anything, or uncircumcision, but a new creature. Everybody say, I'm a new creature. new creature. Amen. As many as walk according to this rule, everybody say rule. Oh, man, we don't like rules in America, do we? Isn't that, isn't that the curse of freedom? We no longer like rules. But Jesus said, the apostle said, walk by this rule. Peace be on them and mercy upon the Israel of God. Everybody say, I'm the Israel of God. Say, I'm an Israel of God. Praise God. You're the called out. The elected, the chosen of God. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in the name of Jesus, amen. If you're calling upon God, you're the Israel of God. God has called you out like he called them. Glory to God. See, can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Promised provisions have rules. Amen. I said all provisions have rules. Everything has a rule. Amen. In the Bible. Praise God. Everything has a rule. And everything in life has rules. Amen. And so the Lord wants us to walk by this rule. And if we walk by the rule, what's it say? Peace is on them and mercy. Everybody say mercy. Now, mercy is compassionate, loving kindness of God. It's always associated with healing. Mercy is always associated with bodily healing. Amen. God had mercy on them and healed all of them. The Lord had compassion on all those people who saw them as scattered like sheep without a shepherd. And he healed them. Amen. Praise God. He went into another town and he healed them all. He had compassion and mercy upon them. Mercy is always associated with healing. Folks need healing here today. Amen. Amen. I said there's lots of folks that need healing here today. But you know the mercy of God is upon them who will walk by the same rule. Amen. Who will walk according to the rules of the word and say, Lord, it's your way, not my way. I'm willing to do things what, the way you want us to do them. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And God's way is this. Psalms 107.20 Look there with me in the King James. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Praise God. Is that powerful verse? That's, it's revelatory, isn't it? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Something was sent. What was sent? The word. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God, John chapter 1, right? Praise God. The Word was sent. Praise the Lord. And he healed them. Everybody say he healed them. Everybody say past tense. He already did it. Everybody say he already did it. Praise God. Everybody say I'm already healed. Amen. Because the Word says I am. Come on, somebody. Amen. Somebody needs to say it. I'm already healed because the Word says I am. Glory to God. Glory to God. For some, he sent the word for something to be done. It's healing and deliverance from what? Look at what it says. From their destructions. <laughs> Notice that personal possessive pronoun, right? There. The things I did. Oh, my goodness. You know what I did? I had a motorcycle accident. Right? I got on the bike. I made the choice. I did it. It was my destruction. But God had mercy. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Thank God. He delivers us out of our own stubbornness. Out of our own rebellion. Out of our own thing that we've done to mess up our life. You ever messed up your life? You ever thought, oh God, how am I ever going to recover from this? I'm so dumb. Or as you say in Spanish, yo soy tanto. Right? You say, man, man I, I just blew a gasket here. I'm just so cotton big and dumb that I don't think God could ever forgive me. Well, this, this scripture says he can, right? Amen? He delivers us out of our, our own destructions. Praise God. Somebody needs to shout. Somebody needs to rejoice. Because praise God, sometimes we could just be... Be, a, be, be, be really stupid. Amen? Right? Praise God. But thank God for this. He sent his word, and he healed, and he delivers us from our own stupidity. Woo, glory to God. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. John chapter 1, the word was made flesh. That word being God was sent to redeem us, set us free, save us, heal us, bring victory, overcome the devil. Hallelujah. Praise God. God did all of that. Amen. Now whose move is it? Whose turn is it to go? Whose, whose responsibility it is to react and to act upon all that God has already provided for us? Praise God. It's no longer promised. It's not in the future, but it's provided. It's here. It's now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's now, not tomorrow, not next year, not next month, amen, or 10 days or 10 years from now. Amen. It's now. God has provided now. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Since God heals and saves by sending his word, what could be more his word than his seven redemptive names that he revealed in the Old Testament, amen, in, the, in his covenant, names which were given for specific purpose, amen, of revealing to every person in Adam's race, Praise God. His redemptive attitude toward us. Praise God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The first name that was revealed is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is present. We were made nigh or close by the blood of Christ. Amen? He's present with us. We're made close by that blood. Everybody say hallelujah. He is Emmanuel. God with us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Praise God. Amen. If you're fearful, he's already provided for you. He's already sent help for you. Somebody say, he is Jehovah Shalom, my peace. He is my peace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jehovah Raha, the Lord is my shepherd. Jesus is a good shepherd laying down his life for the sheep. He's already did it. Praise God. He's already been there. He's already done what he was sent to do. Say, say praise the Lord. Amen. I'm getting all stuttery because I feel like I want to just speak in tongues, but you guys wouldn't understand it. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. That's what Paul said. Don't speak in tongues when you're in the congregation because people need an interpreter. There's times for tongues and there's times for interpretation. Amen. You need to get what we're saying. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then the spirit can fall. Amen. And then the spirit can fall. How many is ready for the spirit to fall? I believe the spirit's going to fall this morning. And somebody's going to leave here right before July the 4th, the, the celebration of Independence Day. And you're going to leave independent of sin, independent of fear, independent of failure, independent of all those things that you brought in with you. Amen. God said he can take it from you today. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And then uh, number four is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide himself an offering. John the Baptist declared when he saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Praise God. How much sin is that? That's a lot. Amen? Just think about the few people you know. How much sin is there? Right? Think about your own universe inside here. How much is there? A lot. Amen? But Jesus already took it. Jesus was already the sacrifice for your sin. Jesus already did it. Praise God. Hallelujah. He is that sacrifice. The Lord will provide himself. And I always thought about that when that was revealed to Abraham on Mount Moriah when he was getting ready to sacrifice his son Isaac. Amen. And the, and the angel stopped him and said, wait, 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 wait. Don't do it. Amen. That question that Isaac asked his father, Abraham, he said, Father, here's the fire, here's the wood, but where is the sacrifice? And Abraham turned and looked to his, to his son, who was the sacrifice, and he said, don't be afraid, son. God will provide himself an offering. He was speaking prophetically. Praise God. Didn't even know it. Amen. You know, there's a place you can get in God when you begin to pray and begin to seek God that you will look at the storm. You will look at the problem and you will say, God says it's over. God says he's provided already. And you didn't even realize why you were saying that. Amen. Because God was speaking through you and he said, now the provision is already there in your life. You just got to speak it out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Quit looking at your storm like it's the end of the world and start looking at your God like he's the creator of the world. That if your world ends tomorrow, God can create one for you at the same moment. Praise God, it's not over until God says it's over. And God says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. And then it's Jehovah Nisi is his fifth revelatory name his fifth redemptive name the lord is our banner or our victor jesus is our champion praise god he spoiled the bible says he spoiled principalities and powers on the cross who glory to god do you know addiction has no power over you come on hear me now addiction has no power over you i said drugs have no power over you Alcohol has no power over you. Bitterness has no power over you. Anger has no power over you. Come on, sickness has no power over you. Why? Because Jesus spoiled the principalities and powers on the cross. Praise God. When he went to the cross, they were like, uh-oh, we messed up. Yeah, you sure did, devil. Hallelujah, because now, amen, Jesus is the, the amen, the ultimate power in the universe. Praise God. No power outside of the Lord. Amen. Nothing has power over you if you're in Christ. Praise God. He is our champion, our banner, our victor. Glory to God. And then Jehovah Tishkenu, which is the Lord, our righteousness. He opened the way for every sinner to receive the gift of righteousness. Listen, you don't have to get righteous to get in church. Those of you who are waiting to get, get good so you can get in church, forget it. You're never going to get good now. And if you were good, you wouldn't fit in with us. Right? Because then we'd be like, oh, man, we're so condemned. You're so good. Right? Amen? We, we, we all come from brokenness. 
We all come from sin. We all come from the same thing. Amen. God says, I come to give you life and that more abundantly. You don't have it. You can't get it, but I'm going to give it to you. Amen. You don't know how to find it. Amen. I was with a, a friend one time in, in Los Angeles. Uh, he's a, 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 a Jewish businessman. He owns a, a house and you can walk out of his house and you can see the, the Hollywood sign right there. And Rodeo Drive is like six, seven blocks away, you know, and, and it's just like a really swanky place to live. And, and we were out in his neighborhood and it was Saturday and he wasn't going to synagogue because I was there. And all the other Jews in the, in, the, in the town were all walking with their furry hats, you know, to the synagogue. Amen. And they were all doing their thing. And we were out, we were out for, for a drive. And we went to Rodeo Drive. He took me down Rodeo Drive. And, uh, and then we cut off on this one street went backwards, back there, and he said, see that building? And I looked up like, yeah, it doesn't have a sign. No, no sign on it, nothing. He said, that's the Hermes shop. That's where you get Hermes scarves. That's where a certain brand was. I don't even know what, what, what brand was. And I said, well, why is there no, no sign on it? He said, because if you have to have a sign, you can't afford it. He said, people that can afford it know where it's at. And those that can't afford it don't know where it's at. And I thought, well, that's a clever marketing. <laughs> Amen. But it's like righteousness. You don't know how to get it. You can't, you can't find the place to buy it. And if you found the place to buy it, you couldn't afford to buy it. Amen. You couldn't pay the price for righteousness. So God said, I'll pay the price for it. I'll give it to you. Here it is. <laughs> Praise God. All you got to do is take it. All you got to do is say, thank you, Lord. I receive it and I accept it. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo. The Lord, our righteousness. Isn't that awesome? That takes so much pressure off me. <laughs> Amen. That takes so much pressure off me. You know, on, on Monday morning or Tuesday morning, when I kneel and I start praying, I say, Lord, oh, God, I really messed up. Oh, I was a bonehead, Lord. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know if I deserve to pray right now. How many ever felt that way? <laughs> Amen. The Lord says, that's all right. I got you covered. What do you need? That's, that's as simple as it is with God. Did you know that? That's as simple as it is with God. That's okay. I got it covered. Woo, somebody lift your hands right now and praise the Lord. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen. And then, amen, the seventh name is what I want to really get to. It's Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee, or I am the Lord thy physician. Praise God. For he himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Amen. Praise God. He is our healer. Everybody say our healer. Praise God. Uh, it's under these seven names that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Jesus also said, he that cometh to me will I in no wise cast out. Amen. Glory to God. He said, I'm not going to cast you out because I am there with you. Praise God. He said he's calling us. And if we respond to his call, if we respond to the word, then he's going to help us and deliver us. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, something about faith is faith is not emotional. Amen? I said faith is not emotional. Faith, amen, is taking it. That's all it is. I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to take what God has already provided. He's promised and provided. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So James 4, 7, it says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. So being right with God is the most important part of healing or blessing. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Amen. See, you're never going to get healed if you don't desire it. You're never going to get saved unless you desire it. God's not going to save you from the swimming pool of sin. Amen. As long as you're there having, you know, the redneck yacht club in the swimming pool of sin. 
and enjoying it. Amen? But as soon as you start saying, Lord, you know what? I'm not really enjoying this anymore. I'm not really liking this anymore. God, I need help. God, I need deliverance. God, I need your, your help right now, Lord. God says, okay, that's all I was waiting for. Amen. Whose move is it? Praise God. Whose move is it? Is it your move or is it God's move? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul taught the body for the Lord before he taught the, the Lord for the body. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6 20. For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Praise God. We sing that song, you know, take all of me, take all of me. And we don't really mean it, right? But God says, present your body. Lift your hand up. Uh, uh, like right, this, 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 Lift your hand up. See, this is part of my body. But God doesn't want your hand. Amen? God doesn't want just his hand. He wants everything connected to it. He wants your physical body. He wants your mind. He wants your spirit. He wants your soul. He wants everything about you. He wants you to present yourself before him and say, God, you are Lord. You are master. You own this. Amen. You redeem me with your blood. You bought me with a price. Lord, I am yours. I'm not my own. Somebody say glory to God. It's not until we give ownership over to Christ of our bodies that he says, now I'm going to heal it because I own it. You know, God is not a bad landlord. Amen. I know some landlords that just let the place go. Right? Just let it go. Let whatever live there and let just let whatever happen until it just falls down. Right? But God's not that way. If you give God this body, if you give God this body and say, God, I want to glorify you in, glorify you in my body and in my spirit, God says, okay, I'm going to heal it because now that's my property. And the property of the king has to look good. The property of the king has to be healed. The property of the king has to be delivered. Praise God. The property of the king, amen, has to be top rate. Praise God. Amen. God will make you the best you you've ever been. Somebody say glory to God. I'm going to glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are God's. I'm going to give him everything. Praise God. I'm going to give him everything. If I'm a young person, I'm going to give him my whole life. I'm going to say, God, from this day forward for my entire life, God, I am yours. You are mine. I'm going to serve you with everything in me. I'm not going to chase after the world, but I'm going to look for you, Lord. I'm going to do what you want me to do, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Don't wait till you're an old dude like me to decide to live for God. Amen. Don't wait. Do it now. Do it while you're a young person. Pray in tongues while you're a young person. Get a gift of the Lord in your life like while you're a young person. Learn to walk in the Holy Ghost while you're young. Because if you'll do that, you'll be blessed. And the world will be a greater place for you. Somebody glorify the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. But if you haven't yet. And you're already an old dude like me? Don't worry, God's got you covered. Amen. Praise God. He said that even the old men are going to dream dreams. Woo! I'm covered. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen? God still redeemed the time. Amen? God still do a miracle in your life. Why? Because he's a good God. I said he's a good God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I trust the Lord with all my heart. I thank the Lord for the privilege, amen, of being his son. Praise God. Isn't it an awesome thing? If you want healing, present your body to the Lord. Amen. I said, if you want healing, present your body to the Lord. I wonder if there's somebody here today who's going to present their body to the Lord. Is there somebody here today that's going to present your body to the Lord? And say, God, I'm going to get out of this, this religion thing. Amen. Just going to church on Sunday to satisfy my conscience, to satisfy my religious, my religiosity. Amen. And I'm going to go to church and I'm going to present my body to God. And I'm going to worship God in my spirit because both belong to you. Woo. 
Hallelujah. It was said of the United Methodist Church that uh, about 50 years ago, they did a big study, and they said they were wondering why their people were leaving the United Methodist Church in the droves. And as you can see now, you go throughout all the, the towns and cities around, amen, the United States, you'll see these United Methodist churches just sitting empty all over the place. And uh, they did a big study, and they found out, they, they tried to find out why people were leaving the United Methodist Church. And I'm not, I'm not casting stones at them at all. They're the precursor of the United Methodist. The Methodists are precursor to Pentecost. Amen. Amen. Charles Wesley and all those guys. Amen. And they said, the reason we discovered was this. Because we did not leave our children a burning testimony of the power of God in their life. We did not leave them a burning testimony of the reality of a risen Christ. Praise God. Oh, my friend, hallelujah, I'm preaching to Abundant Life Tabernacle. Amen. If you're going to affect this generation from this day forward, you have got to have the fire of the Holy Ghost burning inside of you like you've never had it before. You're going to have to walk in the Spirit. You're going to have to pray for the signs, miracles, and wonders of this gospel to take effect. Amen. In this place, amen, like never before. In this new building, it's not time for us to sit down and say we made it. Amen. We're the best church around no amen we gotta fill this place up we gotta fill these altars up we gotta fill the prayer room up we gotta fill the baptistry up we gotta see more miracles now than we've ever seen before why because and this generation needs to be touched praise god amen many times when i was pastoring the first church i pastored praise god i would get in the sanctuary the little bitty church amen a storefront and i'd pray late in the night god i don't know how to really win souls the way that amen a lot of other people do but god i know i can pray them in amen so i begin to pray god uh, send people to this church send people here lord as they're walking down the street God, whatever they're doing, Lord, just create a big whirlpool around this church of the Spirit and just draw people here. And people would come. We would have visitors. I didn't, ha I didn't have anybody to help me go out and, and witness. It was just me and my wife and my two little girls. Amen. We'd do the best we could. But then I'd get in there and I'd start praying. Amen. Every time we went out and we did a little bit for God, God would send visitors. We didn't even know who they were, where they came from. Come on, church. You look, look around here. Look around here. Look, look at the chairs next to you. Hey, Amen. I, I know it's a holiday weekend and all that. But look. Look how, many, how much room we got. Now there's a beautiful group here. I love you. You're awesome. You're beautiful. I want to just hug all of you. But God has put us here for purpose. For miracles. Miracles. Praise God. Praise God. I was preaching at a friend's church a couple months ago. Amen. Old church. Been around one of the most, one of the oldest apostolic churches in Colorado. Been around for a long time. And the old people are fighting with the young people. Right? There's this generation fight going on. Because the old folks want to sing the same old songs. Right? I love them. They're great, son. Nothing wrong with them. But the youth are like, oh. Amen. Can't we have the drums? Can't we, you know, can't we have a little more modern music? Can't we have a little more, you know, get up and go kind of thing? Amen. And so they, they decided to kind of marry the two. Amen. So the young people are getting appreciation for the old hymns and the words. And the, new, the, the older people are starting to get a little more appreciation for the new tunes. Amen? But you know what? If, if we ever start rapping for worship, I'm out. I'm gone. I'm gone. I, I just, that's a line I can't cross. Right? <laughs> praise God. But praise God. Amen. This music team, you keep praising, keep worshiping, keep expanding your repertoire like you're doing. God bless you. You're doing an awesome job. Give them a hand. Amen. Praise God because they lead us into worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God. But God is moving 
in this church, amen, in this church and in my, uh, my friend's church as well, God is moving. I told him, amen, we are praying not for something different than what our forefathers had, but we're praying for the same outpouring of the Holy Ghost that you had 40 years ago, that you had 60 years ago. We need it in this generation in the same intensity and power that you had. It. Teach us how to do it. Amen. Praise God. Somebody shout Hallelujah. How many wants to see miracles? How many wants to see God heal people of cancer? How many wants to see people be raised from the dead? How many wants to see people miraculously changed? Praise God. Raise your hand to the Lord right now. The only way we're going to do that is presenting our bodies to Christ. I said the only way we're going to do it is present our body to Christ. You've got to get off FaceTime and get on knee time. Come on. we got to get off Facebook and get in the book. Come on. Hallelujah. we got to stop getting, being on Twitter and start shaking under the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on. The living for God is not a sound bite you put on Instagram. Amen. It's living day by day by day by day and getting the full weight and power of God's glory and his word inside of you that you can change the world that you're a part of.